closer in time. A 15-year-old girl collides with a friend while ice skating. This seemingly unremarkable print of a seemingly unremarkable event is anything but. The young lady is Lidwina, who would subsequently suffer a life of grave physical affliction, including vision loss, partial paralysis, and bleeding. This event has been studied by modern medicine, which concluded her illness was likely not the result of the collision itself, but rather an underlying condition, perhaps multiple sclerosis. Despite her many ailments, Lidwina dedicated herself to tirelessly helping others, an undertaking to which she was so immutable and effective she was lauded by her community, and in time, much of the world. This print was included in a text by John Brugman about 100 years after the ice skating incident. He could not have known another historically important consequence of his work. It is one of the earliest, if not the earliest, depictions of ice skating, and not just any old ice skating, but ice skating with modern-like metal-sharpened blades as suggested by this skater's propelling himself with the inside edge of the blade. About 500 years after the accident, Lidwina would be canonized by the Catholic Church. She is venerated as the patron saint of her hometown, Shedham, and as the patron saint of chronic pain and ice skating. I'm not making that up. Ice Hockey Ice hockey as we know it today is the result of a centuries-long evolution, or perhaps amalgamation, of competitive predecessors with distant roots in ancient ball and stick games. Many historians agree the first modern game of ice hockey took place at the Victoria Skating Rink in Montreal, very close to 100 years after the first known use of the word hockey in print publication. In the intervening years, gameplay has been refined by rule and technology, and while once confined mostly to cold climbs, Professional leagues can now be found across the globe. The 2023-24 campaign marks the NHL's 107th season of operation. Hockey nowadays is regarded by many as the ultimate in-person spectator sport. If you've never been, I suggest you make a point of seeing at least one live game in person. Professional teams especially deliver a richly sensorial live experience. The game itself is marked by aerobicized grace, creativity, misdirection, and evasion. In leagues where checking is permitted, the action is punctuated by flourishes of extemporaneous brutality. In keeping with the glorious sentiment of legislative schizophrenia common to the postmodern era, the NHL has simultaneously both welcomed and prohibited fighting. While purists eschew such barbaric interludes to the sport's aesthetic, we do confess their entertainment value. Fighting, moreover, offers players the invaluable opportunity to lose additional teeth. Johannes Brahms composes Second String Quintet, Opus 111. Known for his truly prodigious canon of symphonies, chamber music, leader, piano, and choral works, perhaps Brahms's most infamous legacy is never having composed a work celebrating the great game of hockey. Despite this grave oversight, most modern experts rate Brahms on a three-point Likert scale as above average in terms of music. Among Brahms's latter works, Opus 111 was certainly influenced by Franz Schubert, another composer who did not write music about hockey. The NHL 2023-24 season is closer in time to Brahms's Opus 111 than it is to the first modern ice hockey game by about 15 years. The NHL 2023-24 season is moreover closer in time to the first modern ice hockey game than that first modern game was to Brugman's printed depiction of Lidwina's fall by about 230 years. The Ice Wars Whatever you do, don't miss the next exhilarating installment of Closer in Time. Passion hit him right in the jaw. 